It's time we talk about spending his money. I am surprised that I have not even done an episode on this. Whilst this is something I talk about so often. So yes, we are going to dive into the topic of spending his money because why not? This is something that I would like to talk about because there is so much emphasis that is placed on the conversation about money and there's a lot of fear and discomfort that women seem to have in regards to discussing finances pertaining to dating men. If you are familiar with my podcast and have listened for at least five episodes, then you probably know what my stance is on men and money. If you don't know what my stance is, don't worry, I will fill you in. My stance on men and money is I deeply, strongly believe that if you're going to be dating a man, you need to make it worth it for you. Because in the end, men are never going to be everything that we need. They don't seem to be presenting any chance of living up to what we expect of them. And so it makes sense to just cut your losses and pick the man who is going to match the life and the lifestyle that you want. So this boils down to the conversation of dating selfishly, dating for a reason. A lot of times when we discuss dating with purpose and dating intentionally, for the most part, that conversation revolves around dating to marry, which I find a little bizarre as a concept in my personal opinion, because if we are dating to marry, then surely we should be dating for money. Because in my personal opinion, marriage to a man is not about you finding him attractive and you loving him. There's got to be more than that as a reason to financially and legally bind yourself to that person. In my personal opinion, (laughs) marriage is the one time where the woman, if she's wearing her thinking cap or her thinking wig, marriage is the one time where the woman gets to operate for her own selfish benefit and make it legally work for her. So what do I mean by that? Especially if we're talking about dating to marry, which actually, in my opinion, is dating for money. (laughs) If I was to be dating to marry, I would only be dating men who I know that if I was to marry them, I'm going to be financially good for the rest of my life. But I'm not dating to marry. I'm not even dating right now. But if I was to be dating, I'd be dating to date. And when dating for date, dating to date, I would only still be dating men who I know I'm going to be financially good with for the rest of my life. (laughs) So it's still the same thing from my perspective, being that it has to be worth it for you as a woman. And money is important. I think that we are at some points all guilty of being intellectually dishonest when it comes to the money conversation. There's this fear of coming across vapid or as the as they love to accuse me of being capitalistic for caring about your future. The academic girlies are alleging that I am a capitalist because I wouldn't marry or partner with or have a child with someone who cannot make sure that I am financially good for the rest of my life. Apparently, that's too much to ask of a man, but it's not too much to ask a woman to risk losing her life to have a baby. Yes, because we've all been convinced to believe that having a baby is no different to going for a walk down to Tesco and buying a packet of crisps because having a baby is something that the body can naturally manage. Therefore, we've normalised it so much that we don't even value 
the intensity of what the experience of pregnancy means. So much so that we are angry at any woman who says, for me to have a man's child, I would need to be financially secure for the rest of my life. And I find that laughable. I do, especially because, do you know how much surrogates get paid to carry someone's baby? I know someone who was in the process of being a surrogate. She was offered 60,000 Great British Pounds. £60,000 to carry someone's child for nine months. Push it out and hand it over. £60,000. To some people, that's a lot of money. Objectively speaking, that's a lot of money. And I think that woman deserves that and more should she decide to ask for more. So it's quite interesting that a woman who you don't know, but you want her to carry your child for whatever reason, would be deserving to be paid. But the woman who you do know personally, who might I argue you're in love with, does not deserve to be paid to carry your child. That's interesting. When we probe into that a little further, we need to observe the reasons why people have such an ick towards the idea of paying a woman to carry a child, paying a woman to be with a man, paying a woman for anything. It's because we don't value women's time. We don't value what women go through to be pregnant. We don't value any of it. So the idea of a woman saying, well, this is what's going to make it worth it for me is, (gasps) what about love? You should accept the emotion, just the love. You shouldn't ask for anything else, which I think is ridiculous. And I understand the people who have pushed back towards the idea of a woman should be paid to carry a man's child because, you know, what if she just wants to enjoy the experience of being pregnant? What if she also wants the child? I think two things can be true at once. I think you can really want the child and you can also really want to be financially stable. You can really want the child and you can also really want reparations for the isolating and painful and uncomfortable experience of pregnancy and childbirth that you will go through alone. Your partner can be in the delivery room with you, but it's only you that's going to be dilating to 10 centimetres. It's only you that might need an emergency C-section. It's only you that might lose 30 pints of blood. It's only you that might die on the table. It's only you. So you get to decide what's going to make this risk worth it for you. And even if you're not opting into pregnancy you still stand the risk of losing your life if you are partnering with a man. The highest risk to a woman's life is a man. (laughs) So even after all that said and done, it's up to you to decide what's going to make it worth it for you to take this risk of sharing your life with a man. Because in the end, he could kill you. And even if he doesn't kill you, the stress of having to repeat yourself, the stress of containing your emotions and not expressing them outwardly because you're not gonna be listened to or because you fear creating conflict, the stress of doing everything on your own, especially the household labor, cough, cough, the wannabe trad wives, the stress of all of that will probably kill you anyway. (laughs) So if that man doesn't strangle you by himself, The stress of being around him will kill you first. So this is not to say that it's entirely bleak and negative to partner with men. Things can be great if you partner with men, especially (laughs) if you aim for the stars. And what are these stars I speak of? The stars are your standards. Aim for your standards. I think things can actually be great with men. I genuinely think that you can have beautiful experiences with men. But the caveat here is that you cannot get attached. Because when we discuss this money conversation, I think what people are a bit anxious about is this idea of the phrase false sense of security, which I understand. But you need to be three steps ahead of men at all times. 
It's only a false sense of security if you believe him. The only sense of security that truly exists in this life is your security in yourself. That is all you have to hold on to in this life. All you have is yourself. All your body has is itself. You only have one brain. You only have one heart. Those organs function to keep you, a singular person, alive. Because all you have is yourself. In the same way, all you have is your truth. All you have is your security in who you are. So when you know that to be true, when you have an understanding of your self-esteem and how you feel about yourself, then you know that a man saying pleasant nothings to you isn't penetrating further than the first layer of skin that protects your skull. He can't get over on you. Now, if you're an advanced player like I am, I like to consider myself an advanced player because I've done my time. I've done my time on the pitch been shooting hoops in my back garden I've had my practice (laughs) when it comes to navigating the psychology of men I would say security in self and being an advanced player means learning to not believe men and it's not about saying that like every single thing a man says is a lie and that you should constantly be dubious and you should never ever feel sure of someone saying they like you no what I'm saying is men lie but the numbers don't so take his money (laughs) if a man tells you he loves you he's got to show you how much he loves you in that moment and that number can change because numbers are arbitrary but you can apply that numerical value to something that's physically tangible in your life and that physically tangible thing can improve your quality of life where am I going with this you might wonder well if a man says he loves you you're like oh well you've got to show me how much you love me today because you know me I don't hear words I feel them I need to physically feel those words in my hand better still I want to feel those words in my bank account so when a man tells you he loves you you're like oh how much as a joke of course because it's impossible for a human being to be able to quantify feelings in an exact numerical value but we can all start somewhere so oh i love you how much do you love me check your account oh you sent me 500 pounds you're so funny you're so cute okay fine that's a good start that was really sweet of you you see that 500 pounds in your account hmm what can I do with this 500 pounds? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pay for a course. I kid you not, this is a true story. This is something that I did. This wasn't a man that loved me. This was an admirer. He was, he didn't even make it to being my sub. He shot himself in the foot. Um, This was a while back. He is a submissive man and he came across me online and he was an, an admirer for a while. And then he sent me hundred pounds to introduce himself because basically if you don't know which if you've listened to this podcast you're probably tired of hearing me having to repeat this spiel but for those who have just joined don't worry I'll not leave you in the dark if you don't know I'm a dominatrix and how it works for me is any man who wants to introduce himself to me has to pay something called a tribute fee a tribute fee is simply an acknowledgement of me in a way that respects my time it is not you purchasing my attention you don't get to have any sort of entitlement to me it just means okay this person is introducing herself and wants to stand out very good we're off to a good start so my tribute fee is 100 pounds minimum a man must pay 100 pounds minimum if he wants to introduce himself to me so this guy He sent me the £100 via my wish list, which is where I receive the money that men want to send me without them having my bank details. Anyway, he sent me £100 and he bought me some other items on my wish list. And I was like, hmm, who is this? 
now you got my attention. Because it's one thing someone sending your initial tribute fee. Because, yeah, they're supposed to. Because that's the only way they're going to get a response from you if they want a response. But it's another thing them going the extra mile, extra curricular, and getting you some gifts as well because that's a beautiful way to stand out and that shows me that you're starting as you mean to go on so this guy did that bought a couple gifts and he sent the hundred pounds we started talking briefly and then I believe he wanted to send me a voucher for something but the voucher only had a maximum of 150 and I wanted him to send me 250 so I just gave him my Revolut details and he sent me 250 over there and then I asked him to double it just to see what he will say. Because me, I'm a risk taker. I'm a fire starter, trouble instigator. <laughs> I'm a risk taker. But it's about taking calculated risks. And it's also about recognizing that in this life, if you don't ask, you don't get. And I think this story is important because there are a lot of women who message me and say, I'm too scared to ask men for stuff. What do I say? There is never going to be anything I can tell you to say that's going to stop you from being scared if if your deep fear is rejection. Because behind your fear of him saying no, the actual fear is rejection. So anyway, within the space of 48 hours, he sent me £500. Do you know what I did with that £500? I went to www. This is not an ad, by the way. This is just something that I spent my own money on because I've, I've done a course there before and it worked for me. www cityacademy.com <laughs> in the UK we have something called City Academy um, and in London you can do courses on whatever you want to do whether it's guitar lessons whether it's songwriting lessons previously I've done songwriting lessons at City Academy which I loved and so when this guy gave me the 500 I was like you know what I want to do because I've been wanting to do this for a while voiceover course yeah do you know what the voiceover course is it's basically, you know, when you are in Superdrug and you hear the woman, it's like, get 5% off your beauty favourites only at Superdrug while offers last. See that lady, her voice? She's a voiceover artist and she got paid good money for that. And I've always been fascinated by the idea of doing voiceovers for adverts because I don't have to actually be front facing in the advert to still make money and to still be involved. I just love the idea of that. So... The £500 that he sent me, I used it to book a voiceover course and it was over the period of five weeks going to the um, venue once a week to go take the lessons and I've completed the course quite a while back now and I'm quite proud of myself because soon I'm going to have a voiceover agent, fingers crossed, and Soon you're going to be hearing my voice in adverts and you might not even know it's me. <laughs> but I'm sharing that to say, this is not about spending men's money to buy frivolous things that might lose value in a year's time. Of course, if you want to spend your money on menial, silly things, that is your choice. But what I'm saying is this is about navigating for your future and operating with your future self in mind using men's money to build yourself up using men's money to start the business you've always wanted to start there are a lot of women who are scared of asking men for money most times it's because you lot are meddling with the wrong men yeah and by the wrong men i mean you're meddling with broke men you stop asking broke men for money leave them alone it is unethical to take from the poor leave them alone they need that money. I do not meddle with men who need the money that they need to give to me. <laughs> like, if you really need that £500, it's better in your hands than mine because I'm not about to get stalked for £500. It's not that serious. Seriously, it is never that serious. The women who are like, oh, but um, if you get money from a man, then isn't he going to kill you? <laughs> so you agree that men are dangerous people. So if you believe that receiving money from a man means he's going to kill you, then we're making the same point here, being that men are people that we can't trust. Therefore, if we're going to be meddling with men, we should only meddle with men who will make it worthwhile for us. 
But if your argument is, oh, men with money are scary, therefore I'm going to date a broke man, you're putting yourself in even more danger if you're thinking along the lines of what's considered dangerous. Because broke men have nothing to lose. They don't give a fuck about their futures. Especially the ones who are getting by on this, oh, I'm I'm, I'm trying, I'm hustling, I'm trying. Look, what you're building, another man has built. So I'm just going to go where it's already built. I'm not about to wait for you to figure it out. I'm not, I don't have that time. I'm not going to allocate you that time when someone else has already got what I want. That's life because a man is not going to wait for you to get pretty. If he doesn't find you attractive, he's not going to wait for you. He's not going to be like, oh, she's really busted, but you know, you never know in three years' time she might get more beautiful if she learns how to do her skincare and her makeup and find a haircut that suits her. You think men are going to wait for you to get more beautiful? Or are they going to just move on to someone who currently looks like what they're attracted to? Exactly. So think about that more often when you're cutting men unnecessary slack that they have not earned. Talking about some, oh, he's going to get money one day, so I'm going to just wait it out. Girl, do you know you have 30 minutes? 30, 30, 30, yes. 30 you have 30 minutes girl you have 30 minutes <laughs> you don't have the time you think you have and men know that but they rely on you being stupid do you know that men rely on you not valuing yourself for them to have access to you and you not let them slide in and out every single time I wish that I could share more stories in depth about the things men have done for my life, especially financially. But the reason I don't share that stuff online is I don't like people pocket watching me and I don't want to attract robbers. Okay, I don't want to make myself a target. You see, there's people that love to stunt and flex their designer shoe and bag. I love that for them, especially if they're a luxury content creator. Love that for you guys. Me, I prefer to look in the shadows a bit. I like when people can't figure out what I have. <laughs> like, I prefer for it to stay that way. Um, And I love knowing that I know what to do with the money. Now that I'm a bit older, I know what to do with that money. That's why it's important to have something you're already building for yourself. I don't believe you should be looking at having boyfriend if you've not built anything for yourself as a woman. Because the purpose of the boyfriend is for him to add to what you're building and get you there quicker. Men are not the destination. They are the mode of transport to get to the place you're going. You can take the bus or you can take a private jet. (laughs) And the private jet doesn't mean necessarily you have to be of a millionaire. I'm just saying convenience of travel. The private flying experience means you have more leisure comfort convenience to the destination that you want to go to versus getting the bus which might be crammed which might take longer which might be more uncomfortable you're still going to get there but it's about understanding okay if a man's coming into the picture what's he doing for this picture it's not about just lugging a man around for the sake of having a man that's why my point again If you have not built anything for yourself, why are you concerned about having a boyfriend? Because if your reason is um, because everyone deserves love, uh don't you love yourself? Don't you have people in your life that love you? Because I personally would be worried for you if the only person who loves you is your boyfriend. Does that sound right to you? The only person who loves you is your boyfriend. You don't even love yourself, but your boyfriend loves you more than you love yourself. That man is definitely going to be taking advantage of you. And also, if the only person who loves you is a man, then you've got to go back to the drawing board, take it all back to the lab and start again. Reformulate it, babe. Because one thing I would never, ever do is rely on a man. People are talking about, oh, um, if you date a man who has money, you're relying on him. Girl, whoever, I have never said that in my life. I have always said, you're using men's money to expand your empire. Girl, we are not playing the same game. We are not on the same court, girl. Hell no. I'm playing for the long haul. I ain't playing for some Gucci bag and Prada eyeglasses. No. I'm playing for assets in my name. 
properties in my name, financial stability for the rest of my life. I'm not playing for flashy gifts. Those can come and go along the way. And I welcome all sorts of gifts, especially the flashy ones. We love a little flashy gift here and there. But this is all about you thinking for the life you want to have when you're in your 40s, not just your 20s. You're not going to be in your 20s forever. Your life will change when you're in your 40s. Your desires will change. Your interests will change. Your sense of what's valuable will change. So if you partner wisely, you could be in your 40s on vacation all the time. You could be in your 40s working from home whenever you want to. And when I even say working from home, you're working on what you want to work on. You're not working for someone else if you don't want to. You could be working on your business that you started five years ago. Three years into your business, you met a lovely fellow who also had money, who was also respectful, who also really loved you. And the money he was giving you, you was using it to build your business and expand it. You're a smart girl. Well done. But a lot of people are not that smart. That's why they think, oh, if a man gives me money, he's going to control me. Yeah, that's because you don't have any self-control. Speak for yourself, girl, because I ain't scared of no man with money. If you've been around people with money, especially people who have worked really hard to make their money, you will know that they are so careful about not ruining their reputation. And this is another thing. If you're somebody who is so easily swooned by a person paying you attention, you're a prime victim for love bombing. That's why when men are love bomb bombing you, you have to pretend like you're in on it too. You pretend that it's working. <laughs> you pretend that it's working. And when you start to see what you don't want to see anymore, you can just cut off because you were never attached in the first place. A lot of women are not ready for the real conversation of what it means to actually date men and to date properly, in my opinion, because to date men properly means you need to date detached. You don't get attached to them. That's the main mistake I see women making. And it's like, me, I just love to watch it all happen and not say a word because it's not my business, in it? Like, it's you that we end up in McDonald's, not me. <laughs> it's you that has your life that you're going to rubbish, not my own. I'm just using your own as case study to be like, you see, this is what I was saying. Mm hmm. And it's not that I'm being bad, man. It's more just, that's just how my brain works. When I see people around me making decisions that I wouldn't make, I like to observe their outcomes. I like to quietly be like, okay, this person has done this. Well, this is what I think is going to happen. And when my findings end up being true, I'm like, mm, you see, I knew I was right. <laughs> you cannot trick me. <laughs> and it's not that I'm laughing at that person. No, it's me saying that, this is why I'm so proud of the mindset I have. It has really kept me out of trouble. It has really kept me away from horrible men. Because I've seen women give their power away and call it falling in love. And I'm like, girl, I'm not falling into any love. I am consciously stepping into it. There's a difference. Because I feel like when you're falling in love, the idea of falling, when you fall, you've been caught off guard when you fall, you don't always have a soft place to land. So when people are falling in love, where are they landing? We don't really answer that part of the question. Do we ever even ask that question? Where are you landing when you fall in love? Because what I keep on hearing is, but I love him. But I'm in love with him. That's why I'm not going to leave. Oh, it really hurts, but I'm in love now. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, girl, I can't help you. That's why you don't get attached. Rule number one, you don't get attached. That's it. You might be wondering, well, how do you not get attached? If you already love yourself, if you already have a plan for how you want your life to look, and this man fits in with the plan, whether he knows or not, you're not getting attached to him. At most, you might get attached somewhat to the idea of what he could be for you. But once you see that he can't be that for you, you can detach. A woman's downfall is becoming emotionally attached to the wrong man. It's even worse when you become emotionally attached to the wrong man who happens to have money. Because not only are you emotionally embroiled in this mess, you are also attached to the treatment he gives you and you're reliant on the validation that him having money brings to you. And because you're not a smart person, 
instead of to be using that money he was sending you to pump into your business that you already had started before you met him or to use that money to pump into your self-betterment, even if you're just using that money to book seven Pilates classes, even if you're using that money to book your cosmetic treatments, it's all going towards self-betterment because with self-betterment comes you meeting better people for you. Do you see where we're going with this? Because if you're using your money to, if you're using his money to improve yourself, (laughs) then you're going to be attracting even more men that probably have even more money than him. And I know that someone listening to this is going to be like, there's so much emphasis on money. What about love? This is all about love. This is all about love because the man who loves you will give you everything. The man who loves you, who has the means, will make sure that you are financially set good for the rest of your life. The man who loves you will not just impregnate you. He'll put properties in your name for you to raise those kids with him in. And I mean properties in plural, because it can happen for you. It's about the man you pick, but it's also about how you're presenting yourself. Do you look like money? And I'm not talking about you walking around in diamonds all the time and wearing flashy designer. No, 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 no. There are indicators of wealth that aren't even to do with clothing. How you groom yourself. How you dress for your body type. Those are things that also indicate a wealth of self-esteem. Do you have the wealth of self-esteem? Because I see this constant argument online that I think has some truth to it. The argument being rich people only date other rich people. So why would you think that you stand a chance to attract a rich man? Okay, that's a fair argument, given that there are rich people who live in communities where there are only other rich people that live there. Fair enough. But if you're living in a very metropolitan city, like London, and you're in the creative industry, That's one place where it's a huge melting pot of classes. Or if you're in a very, very academic environment, especially if you are studying at like a Cambridge or an Oxford, you're more likely to come across people who have come from money. I'm not saying you should go to school and be looking for a boyfriend. What I'm trying to say is... I get where people are coming from with the idea that rich people only date rich people. However, there is a value you can bring to someone's life that if they consider it valuable, it's valuable to them. That's all they need. All they need to, all they need is to consider what value you bring valuable to them. But I do think that if you want to date for the longevity of living a life that is beneficial for you, you're going to have to put some effort into your appearance. That doesn't mean you need to get filler. Not at all. I don't think you need to do any aesthetic procedures that involve changing your appearance. I think it's about grooming yourself and taking care of yourself because people want to invest in whatever they see that is investing in itself. I hope that makes sense. In the context of, for example... I was born working class, completely working class, born in a council home. And my hard work has allowed me the social mobility to navigate various classes of people. And through me slowly making a bit of money here and there through me achieving certain things here and there I've been exposed to various classes of people and I know how to work with the face that I've got I've got a very African face I don't have any ambiguous features you're not going to mistake me for anything other than black and I love that for me as a monoracial black person and at the same time I use my beauty to my benefit I know who finds me beautiful and who doesn't. I know that when I'm in a room full of men, they will oftentimes see my tattoos and my body shape 
before they take an interest into my personality eight times out of ten their attraction to me will decrease significantly once I open my mouth because they realize oh she's smart oh she's got self-esteem god damn it but the two times out of ten where men express attraction to me is usually the men who have the means to not be intimidated or feel insulted by the standards I have because they meet and sometimes even exceed those standards with flying colours. So to come back to that argument of rich people only date rich people, so don't even bother. Don't don't let that stop you from aspiring for a better life for yourself. You don't have to be with a millionaire to do better than a broke man who's going to mooch off of you and split bills. Come, does this sound correct in your ear? Oh my goodness, you're so beautiful, I want to split bills with you. Versus, oh my God, you're so beautiful, I want to take care of you. You should not have to lift a finger for the rest of your life. That's how beautiful I find you. What sounds more flattering to you? What sounds more enticing to you? Because I've never in my life imagined a man saying to me, you're so beautiful that I would split bills with you, being enticing. But if I heard a man say to me, you are so beautiful that I would take care of you and make sure you do not have to live a fi- lift a finger unless you wanted to, I would be enticed by that. It is not attractive for a man to split bills with a woman. That doesn't, I don't, I don't, I don't see how that means that he's in love with you. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> if that man is in love with you and he hasn't got that much money, the love should motivate him to get a second job. The love should motivate him to go harder with his business so he can give you an easier life. I'm sorry, I'm just not hearing it. That's why I don't believe in stressing these men out who don't have the means. There are some men who just don't got it. They don't got it. And that's okay. You just got to leave them alone to figure it out. Leave them alone to be with somebody who is equally yoked with them. I am not equally yoked with a broke man. We have nothing in common. We don't. I am equally yoked with the man who can facilitate the life that I know I deserve to be living in. In the name of Jesus. Amen talking about Sam I love you so much I'll split bills with you does that sound correct in your ear does that sound right to you I love you so much that I'll split bills with you go if you don't get the fuck and another thing when it comes to spending his money use his wrongs as an opportunity to make money yes yes anytime that's this is why you've always got to make sure From the onset, when you're even in text messaging stage, because I ain't going to call that shit talking stage, fuck that shit. Text message stage, just to show you how ridiculous that is. When you're in the text messaging stage, even before text messaging stage, when you're first uh, introducing yourselves to each other, scan his shoe, scan his cufflink, scan his his earpiece. Does this look like somebody who can afford to say sorry in pounds? Because at some point, he's going to do something wrong. And it's not anticipating doom and gloom and being bad vibes and being negative is acknowledging the humanity in that person he's a man he's a person he's gonna wrong you the fact that he's a man means he's definitely gonna piss you off at some point he might be negligent he might be forgetful so how can you benefit from that because that's gonna piss you off the way to benefit is uh when he's doing all i'm sorry i'm really really sorry you're gonna have to show me how sorry you are here's my wish list you can pick out of these three items. Send me the tracking link when you've bought it. Alternatively, if it's money that you want from him to say sorry, well, I won't be taking your apology seriously until you've sent me X amounts. I look forward to receiving the notification that the cash is in my accounts. Until then, I don't want to hear from you. You have to be as brazen as he was when he was doing what he did to piss you off. I don't care if you say mistake. I don't care. Certain mistakes need to be punished accordingly so that that mistake will not be made again. And if you think that's too extreme, then girl, you're not cut out for the life you think you want, you know? Because for you to get the life you want with men, you're gonna have to be really stern. Don't be waiting for men to think for you. Men are not going to just hand you the life you want because you want it. That's not how none of this shit works. If left for men, they will have you scrubbing tiles with a toothbrush 
bent over so they can see the view of your ass and you they'll make sure you're not wearing any underwear so that they can come and doggy fuck you whenever they want to while you're scrubbing the tiles with a toothbrush because they love the idea of you being a mule working for them but they also love the idea of having infinite sexual access to you because you are a sexual object that doubles as a mop that's how they really really deep down see you if they had their way if they had their way that's what they'll be doing with you so don't be feeling bad this is the problem be feeling bad and it's not paying off okay so for me i got I, I i'm glad that i know myself well enough to say loving me is not a broke man's game you gotta cut your coat according to your size yeah everything can't be for everyone and that's actually okay it's okay I am not scared to ask men for what I want, just like how they're not scared to ask if they can see my breast. Let's both be asking each other ridiculous shit. You're going to ask me for pussy, I'm going to ask you for money. And you know what? I don't feel that fear of rejection. You know why? Because I used to be a stripper. And being a stripper, oh boy, that was rejection therapy crash course. You could be dressed to the nines, beautiful, face beat stunning looking gorgeous yeah and you approach a guy who comes into the club you ask him if he's been here before you're trying to initiate the small talk you introduce yourself you ask him well do you want to go for a dance and he says no and then literally five minutes later you see him going to the dance booth with the girl who actually is his type and she didn't have to put that much effort she just walked up to him do you want to go for a dance babe he's like yes and you're like okay interesting there have been times back when i used to strip when i used to experience a lot of anti-blackness from the uh asian men like sort of like pakistani like indian side of asia they were the ones who staunchly did not like the black girls. And their type specifically was the Elsa type of white girl. See that blonde hair and blue eye? See Elsa? Think about Elsa from Frozen. That was their type. I don't know why, but that was always their type. But when I think about it, I do know why. It's because anti-blackness is global. And countries like Pakistan and India have high rates for skin bleaching because they deeply hate their dark skin. There's a lot of dark skin people in India and Pakistan, and they're also um, anti-black countries, so it makes sense, so, you know, I'd go up to a Pakistani man, I just walked into the strip club, before I've even said, hello, my name is, he just shoo me away, I'm like, sorry, (laughs) in my head, I'm like, wow, okay, interesting, okay, wow, say less, you're gonna shoo me away, yeah, cool, I understand that I'm not your type, but shoo me away is nasty work. But cool, okay, okay. Fine. But then there will be times when I'll go up to guys and talk to them a bit. We go to the VIP room. They spend thousands. Like, I learnt the real raw brunt of rejection in the strip club. I learnt the harsh reality of even if you feel like he might say no, still ask anyway just so that you got that no in writing or or you heard it yourself (laughs) but also it's not the worst thing ever if a man says no to me it's like okay you don't have it okay you don't have it then especially when it's a man who let's just take the strip club out of the conversation if it's a man who has been flash being very flashy and tacky with his flamboyant display of the money he has because he wants to entice you and then you ask him for money and he says no that reflects badly on him because he was showing you all of that money. It turns out he don't got it. So I don't feel that fear people have of like, oh, I'm scared he's going to say no. Okay, well, you didn't ask, so you didn't get. So technically, he has already said no to you. <laughs> I don't really understand what you want me to do. I don't like when people are messaging me being like, um, hey, Chidera, so... um. Yeah, I want to start asking men for things. I want to start working on my confidence. But I'm scared he's going to say, no, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you, girl. What do you think I'm going to say to you that's going to make you stop being scared of a man saying no to you other than you're going to have to just ask. If he says no, then he don't love you. 
Because what you're deeply scared of is to find out that he actually, in fact, is not the man for you. Because that would be the indicator. If you're not willing to shift a mountain for me, then I don't know what we're talking about. Sorry. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not dating a man who won't be making sacrifices for me. I'm not dating a man who won't give me what I ask him for. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to talk about. I'll get it myself somewhere else. So that's why I don't like this argument of like, well, what if you're a woman who already has money? Uh -huh. So what? So because you're a woman who already has money, you should be spending your own money and splitting bills with a man. Is everybody OK? Is everybody OK? The fact that you have your own money is the more reason why you should date somebody who has twice, if not three times, if not five times more than you. So he can pour into you so that you can use his money to expand your money. You use his bricks to build your empire. What is not clicking, guys? I refuse to hear all this shit talking about some war. Well, in the end, all I want is love, really. I don't need money. I just need love. That's the recipe for disaster for you. If you value love, in air quotes, over money, men can get over on you way easier than if you value money. Let me tell you why. Because if you're saying that all you need, need from a man is love, he just needs to tell you words. He just needs to tell you what sounds nice. He just needs to tell you what you need to hear. Is that it? Is that it? Because if you already love yourself and you have people in your life who love you, the only way a man can love you and make a difference in your life is for him to put that love into action. That's why I don't care about all this, oh, he needs to love you. For a man to love me, he's given me everything he's got. Hand it over now. <laughs> no, seriously though. Give me everything you've got. That's the only way I'll be able to feel the love. Or else, as far as I'm concerned, you're bluffing. You're talking to yourself. I'm not falling for it. I was not born yesterday. <laughs> I'm way too evolved and old for that. I don't fall for them tricks no more, I'm afraid. You're going to have to get somebody else to do it. You're going to have to find somebody else to fall for that trick. Because men hate women who are not obsessed with love. Even though men loathe the, the idea of a woman being clingy and needy and desperate for love, what they hate more than that is a woman who is detached and doesn't need love because they have nothing they can use to manipulate you. And you would think that, oh, a woman who likes money is easy to manipulate because she likes money. No, I like myself so much that all I would want from a man is his money because I know what I'll use that money for. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm building, what's that thing Black China's mom said? I'm building the schools in Uganda. I got to buy my adopted kids in Uganda. <laughs> no, jokes aside, I don't have any schools in anywhere. I've not got any adopted kids. What I'm using that money for is for me to continuously pour it into myself, my creative endeavors. Do you know how many bits of burlesque costume I've bought from money men have sent me? Do you know how many pole shoes I've bought from money that men have sent me? I have used the money that men have sent me to put into the businesses. I own multiple businesses and the money men send me, the things men do for me feeds into that. I'm not stupid. You cannot, you cannot trick me. Sorry, I know people so badly want to see something horrible happen to me so that they can be like, see, I told you. She didn't know what she was talking about. See, I told you. This is why you should just find love. Don't worry about money. People so badly. I get, I get these two um, remarks constantly made towards me. And it's quite fascinating to see people say that. The one remark I get a lot is, well, ha, ha, I can't wait to see you find true love and it will be with a man who hasn't got money so you can see what real love is. And it's like, okay, that's really shady to say that you... And also, why do you think that it's only true love if a man hasn't got money? Why do you think that a man who has money can't love you? Like, why is it only true love when it involves struggle? Anyway, the second remark I often get from women is, oh, yeah, but like, you know, it's so dangerous dating men who have money. Like, you know, got to be careful. You know, because these men are dangerous. I'm like, oh, you don't want them to kill you. You got to <laughs> zoom me <up. laughs> Yeah, I don't think you know what you're dealing with. I'm not scared of that at all. The reason why? I am deeply discerning. I'm deeply discerning. And, you know, if a man kills me, that's because we live in a patriarchy. And we live in a world that enables men to get away with that. It's not because I deserved it, just because I wanted better for my life. But um, yeah, I know people want to see something so awful happen to me so that they can 
lean into the tired ass narrative that only true love will prevail. You're not getting true love with a man. You're not. You find the man that fits into your life and make sure that he likes you way more than you like him. That's as good as it gets. And that's fucking great, mind you. That's way better than the true love that you're clinging on to so desperately and trying to position as this morally superior thing to women who have decided that they're going to just outsmart the game. So if you're ready to outsmart the game, the recommended steps will be pour into yourself first. Stop looking for a man. Build your business. These men are going to be here forever, unfortunately. Put your money and your time into building a business. Build something that men can pour into. Build something for yourself so that when a man comes into the picture and he fits the picture, you know what you're going to use that money for. Don't just date men and then if you happen to come across one who has money is going to give you money, you're squandering it on handbags and shoes. Be smarter with your money. Be smarter with your money. That's all I'm saying. And pick your targets wisely. You can always do better. Even if you meet a man who's got money and he's treating you well, you never get attached attached because you can always find one who's got more money. And this is not to be negative. It's to say this is what will psychologically protect you from getting into that whole, oh, you're going to get abused and controlled by a rich man. It's not me I'm going to abuse and control. You can't control me because I've got more than one. Guys. <laughs> I don't think you understand the kind of beast you're dealing with here. The beast being me. I'm not like other girls. I'm worse, guys. I'm worse. I'm worse. I don't put all my eggs into one basket. I don't put all of my reliance on one man. That's rule number one. We don't date just one man. And even if there only happens to be one man in the picture who's doing what you want, you still keep your eyes open. You'll be using the money he's given you to pour into your appearance, to pour into your immediate surroundings so that you can attract even better than him. That's how it goes. That's how it fucking goes. Because these men are here for a season. They're not the be all end all of your life. And should you choose to marry the one, the wrong one, <laughs> good luck to you. Good luck to you, babe, because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> I enjoyed this too. <laughs> Um, yeah, be kind to yourself, be discerning, no man is the prize, you are always going to be the prize, and you deserve a lot more than I love yous and kisses and hugs, you deserve a financially stable future, especially if a man's going to be putting a baby inside you, I'm sorry, that is the least you should be demanding, if it's not that, then don't have his baby please, take care of yourself, and as always, I'll catch you in the next episode.